What's up YouTube, my name is Jim and today we're going over the Traxxas Unlimited Desert Racer. Now this is the rigid edition, they do have a Fox edition. It will go 50 miles an hour plus if you're using the correct battery combination. Very cool truck, it does have a tube cage which is very cool as you guys can see on the other side of the box. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this up, we're going to see what's inside and then we're going to go over the details of this vehicle so I hope you guys have a lot of room on your desk space or wherever you're unboxing this because it is a massive truck. As you guys can see, the first thing we pull out of the box is the truck. And again, it doesn't fit on my desk very well. It's a bit smaller than the X-Max. Now there is a 2.4 gigahertz radio transmitter inside. This is the top qualifier. Very simple, basic controller. We have our set and menu button on top. We also have some steering trim that we can set. Obviously our throttle and on off switch in the back and the bottom does take four double A's. Now this truck does not ship with four double A's. We do have a packet full of goodies. There's some tools in there as well as the owner user guide parts manual. Hold on to that packet, but we're gonna dive really into this truck. Now there is a film on this truck right now. It's on the top. We're just gonna peel that back. It's an extra layer of protection when they do ship these so it doesn't get any scratches in the body. But this is the rigid version, it's red. Again, there is an orange version and that is the Fox edition. The only difference is the body style. That's pretty much it. So now we're gonna dive into the vehicle and we're gonna see what this truck has to offer. Starting with the body of the vehicle, we do have a Lexan body. Now this is held down with screws. There's four in the front, there's two in the side, and then there's four more in the back. So we got quite a bit of screws going on in this truck. You're not gonna be you know, popping things on and off. You actually shouldn't have to do any body work whatsoever because how you access this truck is really through the bottom of the vehicle, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. Now, I do want to let you guys know the front bumper is very interesting on how it works with the body. It can get frustrating the first time you take it off. So what you want to do is you kind of play this, what I call a wiggle game. You kind of wiggle the front top bumper off and then you go to the bottom bumper and you kind of just slide back and forth and it will release itself because the cutouts in the body are actually smaller than the roll cage bumper that is on there. So again, if you slide the bottom on first, just as putting the body on, you can kind of pop that body in and then you slide the left or the right side of the bumper on top over and then it slides in. So kind of hard to explain. You just kind of have to do it. It's very simple. I don't know why that they even have this because there are so many screws. Now on the side, there is a little plastic lip from the chassis. Make sure that the body is inside of this and in the back, where these fenders are, you kind of want to pull these out like a Y because the body actually hits the tires. So you don't want to just pull straight up because you'll never get the body off. You kind of want to just pull out on the sides there. Now these screws are all the same for this, which is very nice. So you guys don't have to make like a screw map. The screws will fit all through the entire vehicle. Now moving on to the inside, we can see that we have this rugged tube cage, we have realistic side panels, and then we do have a detailed interior. Now the guy's heads do move all the way around. I know a lot of people have those questions. There's no reason to actually take these guys out of the vehicle. There's nothing underneath. There's no internals of the truck that you need to reach. There's actually blank space below them. So everything on the truck is in the front or the back or the bottom of the truck. You, there's really no reason to take those guys out. Now the tube cage does have a little bit of flex. It is this gray plastic slash composite. It's definitely gonna hold up in any type of roll or accident that you guys have. Now moving on to the tires of the vehicle. These are replicas and they are replicating the BF Goodrich wheels and tires and those are the KR3 model. Now they're sticky, they do have foam inserts, they are glued down to the wheel. There's also a beadlock ring, and then we have a 17 millimeter hex in the center. Now the plus part of this truck is you have two functional spare tires. 
Looking at the suspension system, we have the all new Extreme Travel GTR shocks. They are aluminum, they are threaded, they have plastic caps both on the front and back. Now we do have two shocks, if you guys haven't seen this, this is called a slave shock, it's in the front. It adds extra dampening to the suspension system and it also carries double the oil capacity so you will have smooth rides. Now we also do have a sway bar on here and the way that this system works is very cool. It looks a lot cooler in the back and I'll show you that a little bit later but as you guys can see we have a heavy duty suspension. When I do lift up right side, the left side kind of follows it because that is due to the sway bar. It will give you just a little bit more control. So the sway bar is actually called a cantilever sway bar and it uses a push rod method. So when you basically push down on the suspension, that sway bar lifts up and it gives you more control over the actual vehicle. Now there are A-arms on here, they're thick. This is a heavy duty suspension system. Now they kind of do form a wishbone for that extra durability. And then we do have a huge oversized ball bearing in here. And you guys can also see the drive shaft going down to each of the tires. Those rods are massive. Now in the back, we still have the GTR shocks. Again, they're aluminum threaded. We do have that slave shock in the back here. And then that cantilever sway bar. This is kind of crazy because this is where you really see the action in the back of the truck, especially when the body's on, you can kind of see that push through. Now the crazy part about this is that you have four inches of travel in the back of the truck and three inches of travel in the front of the truck. Now in the back of the truck, we do have these rubber strap looking things. Now what these are is these are called suspension limiter straps. They are rubber and what they do is they prevent overextension of the suspension system when you guys hit some big jumps and bumps, but they do look really cool when the body is on the truck. You can kind of see those pushing through the back. Taking a look at the bottom chassis here, we got a lot going on. There's a skid plate in the front, there's one in the back. We also do have these heavy duty arms that are holding in our solid rear axle. Now the differentials on this truck, they're all metal. So we have a metal gear differential in the front, there's one in the center, and then there is one in the back of the truck as well. There's also a battery compartment. So this is where we're really gonna do all the work on this truck. We're gonna have access to the motor, we're gonna have access to the clutch, uh, everything like that, the drive shaft. So the battery compartment, it is plastic, it is held in, it's very thick, it's heavy duty. There's no type of screws or there's no type of body clips. It uses this lever locking system, which is very nice. So this is a shot of the back view. Basically, we just push this lever down, it unlocks the battery from the actual chassis, and then we have access to our batteries. Now, Traxxas was smart enough to put a heavy duty locking door on here. So it's basically a hinge system, it's a heavy duty plastic, and it locks back into the chassis. It's very easy and simple to use. Now, we do have two battery ports. These are molded into the actual chassis but they are removable, so if one were to break or one were to fail, you can definitely replace those. It's very simple, you just replace them from the top of the vehicle. And then we have our ESC, which is on the other side. But we do have this massive skid plate on the bottom of the vehicle. This is how we will actually get to our motor. And it is very simple, there's just a lot of screws to take out. Now the screws are the same thread, they're the same length, so you guys don't need to make a screw map. Now, there's no reason to really remove the two screws I removed. It's just that they were a little over tightened out of the factory, but you don't have to remove the skid plate screws. There's actually a little lip on there that you can slide underneath. Now, we do have a Metal Gear servo. This is the 2027 waterproof steering servo on the bottom. It is housed in the gray box there. And then we do have a dual bell crank steering system, which gives us excellent control of this vehicle. On the bottom, we do have a solid stainless steel. I believe it's stainless steel. It is a motor mount. This is mounting the motor to the actual chassis. Now, this is the 2200 KVM brushless motor. It takes 22 volts and it turns it into 50 miles an hour. 
And then again, we have that heavy duty suspension arm in the back there. So you guys can see those rods. Uh, we have basically like a, a, a Y type suspension system in the back using some metal rods. Again, this is the lip on the uh, skid plate here. It actually slips underneath the front skid plate, but again, mine were just a little over tightened, so they were kind of making it impossible to take off. But if you guys just loosen those a little bit, you never have to remove those screws again. You just basically slide those in and out. So your last two electronics are the ESC and the radio receiver. Now these are housed in waterproof cases. Now I did not get a shot of the ESC, but it is located on the back of the actual vehicle. They're very easy to turn on. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. But the ESC that is currently in the vehicle is the new VXL 6S ESC, and it actually has telemetry built in. So all you need is a mobile device and you can actually connect to this vehicle and get some telemetry readouts and things like that. So you don't need to go out and buy an extra piece of equipment. But anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys wanna know more, you can go to dollarhobbies.com or you can pick this up as well as all the parts for this vehicle at dollarhobbies.com as well. Until next time, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.